Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to talk a bit about my transplant. I wanna cover um, a specific experience I had with my transplant, and that is when I suffered from akathisia. Akathisia, it's not very well known. Um, sometimes it takes some digging to find out too much about it, but it is generally considered like a movement disorder. Um, for me, it was caused by the medications Reglan and Compazine. Now Reglan is a medication that is used to treat gastroparesis, which is um, in general terms like paralysis of the stomach and the vagus nerve and slow digestion. And it's not a fun ride. And, and Reglan can sometimes help quicken the movement in the stomach and the digestion. And then Compazine, which is a drug to help with nausea. Uh, because uh, post-transplant, I had a lot of nausea just from the sudden onslaught of like all the medications I had to take and just everything going on in my body. So I was given Compazine, which is admittedly like a miracle drug for nausea. It, for me, it takes care of nausea very quickly. Um, but as we found out, the things it causes are much worse than nausea. So about three weeks out from my transplant, I start getting restless leg syndrome. And I mean, I'd, I'd been suffering with neuropathy for a while, so it wasn't too surprising that I started getting restless legs but it wouldn't quit. And then it started spreading to my whole body. So now, today I get restless leg sometimes and it's just like, I just have to keep like moving my foot for a little while and eventually it fades. This didn't fade. And like I said, it spread to my whole body. And as slow as it felt like it started, as soon as it started to spread, it spread like wildfire and Pretty soon, my whole body, I needed to keep at least a part of it moving at all times. The best definition or explanation I can have for what akathisia feels like is that it is a restlessness and anxiety throughout your whole body. And I want to explain that by saying it is not like I wasn't emotionally anxious about anything except for my body had to keep moving and stressing out about that. But I wasn't anxious about anything really else in my life. You know, like I wasn't really anxious about my transplant or how that was gonna be. I wasn't anxious about other aspects of my life, but the inner restless anxiety could not be stopped. And so, like I said, I had to keep at least one part of my body moving at all times. So a lot of times that would be having to, I'm like shaking my foot right now. I'm like having to shake my foot, but typically it couldn't just be shaking my foot because that wouldn't be enough movement to suffice what I needed to do. So I would shake my foot and I would shake my hand. Um, sometimes I wanted, if I really wanted to stop my legs from moving, I would have to concentrate on not moving my legs, but then I would have to like shake my arms and like flap them. And, or I would just like walk, I would pace. I would pace so much and I'd pace and I'd shake my hands. And if I had to stand still, I was like shaking my body while I was shaking my hands when I wasn't pacing, but pacing all the time. Now I've talked a bit about my transplant and all being sick after for many times getting infections being in the hospital and unfortunately fortunately during a lot of my ecathesia I did have an infection so I was in the hospital I only say fortunately for this because that meant after some periods of time they would agree to give me IV Benadryl and it would knock me out but I would be awake for over three, I would be awake for like three days and just pacing all around the hospital, all, all the time, uh, throughout the night, early in the morning, in the afternoons, 
all the time. Um, and it wasn't always like quick walking, but it was, it was pacing. I would, so to give comparison after my transplant, we'll say I would maybe clock 3000 steps a day um, when I was trying to recover. During especially one hospital stay, I can remember I was clocking up to 25,000 steps a day. It was, it was awful. It was awful. And you try to stop yourself from moving and you feel like you're gonna explode. And you can't really explain it to people. Luckily, like my doctors were, I don't know if they were quite very familiar or familiar with what was happening, but they, they knew what was happening. And luckily we were able to stop both, both of those medications, but that didn't stop the akathisia right away. Like I, it, it had to gradually lessen through the next few weeks. And it was a nightmare. I remember I was in the hospital and my boyfriend at the time, he was, um, he was with me through a, a lot, a lot of stuff in the first couple years after my transplant. And he'd be there and we, I remember specifically, we watched this movie and it was about um, Rod, Ro Rogers and Ebert or Ebert and the movie critic guys. And it was maybe like a two hour movie and we had to stop it every 10 minutes, if that, so I could go walk around for 10 minutes and come back and watch another little piece of it. And then I had to get up and walk around again. I could not stop. Um, and if, if you were to read articles about akathisia, it does mention that this can lead to like severe depression, um, and suicide ideation and suicide attempts and in some cases actual suicide. I've never considered myself to be suicidal um, and even when I had the akathisia and they they told me stopping the medication would help it and it seemed like it was taking forever to, to go away like I never got to the point of being suicidal but I can absolutely understand I've watched a couple of heartbreaking videos um, of people suffering with akathisia um, and some of them in the end have ended up unaliving themselves and my heart breaks for that and at the same time I completely get it um, so after about a month or so my the symptoms of it were about 95% gone um, I remember once I went home from the hospital because I was convinced that if I could get home and sleep in my own bed, lay down in my own bed, I would be able to sleep. And they didn't really have an active infection to treat me for. So they were like, okay. And so I went home, my boyfriend brought me home and then he went to work. And what I would do the first time this happened, I called him and he had to take me right back to the hospital after a couple hours because I, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. Another time I came home from the hospital and I think I was home for like two days. And what I would do is he would be at work and I would drive myself because I could, I, cause driving was fine. Cause I was doing something and while I was driving, I could shake my hand. I didn't really drive all that far. Down the street from us was the mall. So I would go to the mall and I would mall walk for hours. And I would go into this, each store. I would walk through the store to the back of the store, come back out, go into the next store. Never, I couldn't buy anything. I mean, I could, I had money, I could buy stuff, but I didn't have like, I couldn't stand still long enough to buy anything, but I would just go and I would mall walk. I don't know if people thought of me when I was walking because I sure as heck probably didn't look very sane. Um, yeah. And then one time I remember I was in the hospital and, um, my boyfriend was in there with me that night and I hadn't slept for a couple days and I was a little bit out of my head and I told the nurse, I said, I need to sleep. And, you know, she had the doctor and the doctor like didn't agree to give me anything to help me sleep and I just was and I said to her I said 
I think if you don't give me something to help me sleep, I might unalign myself. So don't ever say that to somebody when you're in the hospital because you will put be put on a one-to-one 24-hour -one watch, which I was for the next day, and I was very embarrassed about it. But at the same time, I can't like say that they didn't shouldn't have done that because I was very clearly not in a very good state. And while I say I was never to the point of wanting to do that to myself, in that moment, that was the only thing I could think of that could convince them to give me something to sleep. And that's how much I wanted to stop moving. It's a, it's a disaster um, when this happens. And when I was suffering with it, I joined a couple Facebook groups about it. And some of the people there, they had gotten it from like longer term use of antipsychotics um, or benzodiazepines, I think they're called, or ben benzos, I guess, um, that were prescribed, that were prescription. And then they formed this, and some of them had been suffering for months or years. And I, I, I felt like these were people that understood what I meant when I said that internal anxiety that doesn't quit. But then mine got better. And I, I'm not a part of those groups anymore just because I, it's heartbreaking to me when I think about people that suffer with this long term or for the rest of their lives. And if I'd stayed in those group, it wouldn't be because I needed the support of it anymore. It was just because I was curious of their stories and I don't think that's right. So I left those, but they're there. There are groups for people suffering with this. Like it is not a condition that is known enough about. Um, but yeah, I have talked to many people about my pain and my nausea and in my mind, I mean, I've been, you know, at a one through 10 scale, I've been at 10 many times with pain. I've been at 10 many times for nausea. Um, in the midst of my worst pain, it's awful. And I'm very grateful when I'm able to get pain medication for it. When I'm at my 10 for nausea, personally, I think that 10 nausea is worse than 10 pain. Um, just because I'm not even sure how to explain it. Um, if you know, you know. But the worst nausea I've ever had does not even compare to what I go through or what I went through with akathisia. I was in the hospital, um, I believe in February, and my nausea was so bad. And it had been so long since I had akathisia that I kind of minimized it a little bit in my brain. And the nausea was so bad. They were like, well, we can't give you Compazine. And I was like, yes, you can. Please give me the Compazine. So they gave it to me. And five minutes later, I was taken down for inpatient dialysis. By the time I got down to dialysis, the akathisia had started that quickly that I, being sick as a dog um, and very weak on really strong antibiotics, I hopped out of that hospital bed and I started zooming around like the, I want to call it like a corral because like the dialysis um, inpatient clinic is like bays of like hospital beds set up around like a center nurse's station. I started zooming around that corral and I just was like, I can't stop moving. I can't stop moving. I can't stop moving. And the dialysis nurse called back up to my unit and was like, we cannot give her dialysis right now. Like, no, no, we can't. And they were so compassionate and so, they none of them were like, stop walking. They all just were so kind and wonderful. But I got back upstairs to my unit. They gave me an IV push of Benadryl. And luckily I'd only gotten the one dose of Compazine. So it wore off within a couple hours, but in that moment, like, you know, the 35, 40 minutes that I was having those symptoms, I got so scared. Cause I'm just like, I cannot do this again. I cannot do this. And what if it doesn't go away? 
What if this is like the tipping point and now I'm gonna deal with this for the rest of my life? What if that happens? I, I almost lost it. Um, but then they gave me the Benadryl and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was pretty much gone. I had a little bit of like a tingle in my foot, but I knew it was gone. But it was almost like once my mind thought that the axesia was coming back, it just happened. So part of it was probably like a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it also literally happened. So I don't know. I don't know about that. But after that, um, I told them on my chart to be like, never, ever, 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 ever give her Reglan or Compazine, no matter if she says it's okay. Like never, ever, ever, ever. Um, yeah, I mean, there, I mean, there are plenty of people out there that take Reglan and take Compazine and don't have this happen to them. And well wishes. <laughs> Um, and it sucks because I don't have any, I like nausea medicine that works as well as Compazine does. Um, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it to me to go through that because one of these times might be the time when it actually sticks. So, yeah. So I just, I was, um, sporadically or spontaneously, I don't know, shown a video on TikTok a little while ago of somebody that had had akathisia and my heart just broke for them and I just thought a lot of people have never heard of this but it's a thing and I don't want to say I beat it because I didn't fight that hard against it I just was luck lucky enough to have been taken off the medication that caused it very quickly um I don't think that makes me a winner against it. I just am a lucky person about it. Yeah, so not the happiest of stories. The happy ending is that I don't have it anymore um, and hopefully never again, knock on wood. And I just, that's just another uh, experience that I've had. So thank you for watching this. I hope maybe it taught you something. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later.